How does a rock star who makes so much money lose it all? If you're too young to remember American Bandstand in its heyday, you may not know Jackie Wilson. He was one of rock and roll's first big names. Stars who were the envy of their generation, not only having the time of their lives, but making fortunes along the way. Yet in Jackie Wilson's case, Bob Brown found a different story. If the music of rock and roll helped shatter innocence, the business of rock and roll was not an innocent game. Thank you. created a performance style that singers from Elvis Presley to Michael Jackson have imitated. Some people are entertainers and some people are great entertainers. Some people um, are followers. And some people make the path and are pioneers. Jackie, where you are, I'd like to say I love you and thank you so much. Jackie was a performer's performer. He had the, the smile, the flash. That's what was, was great. He would do this, and the women would say, ah! <laughs> you know, and he'd fall down on his knees, you know. God, that was just great. He was a great performer. Jackie Wilson on stage, he, he personified what I considered rock and roll show business to be about. You might think that an artist of Jackie Wilson's stature and talent, who sold millions of hit records, could have enjoyed the financial independence and security that some other rock stars were able to build. But this is a story of how Jackie Wilson died riddled with debts, without even a headstone for his grave. A man whose money problems had worsened through the years because of the way his managers had shuffled his income and expenses and tax obligations. Academy Award-winning songwriter Al Kasha got his start writing for Wilson. He didn't know how deep in the hole he was getting further and further in the hole to them. And, and the books were never honest anyway. I became very much aware of, of his plight, you know, as a lot of the other singers had the same situation. Singer Mary Wilson, formerly one of the Supremes, and Joey D, who sold millions of twist records in the 60s, understand from their own experiences how a star as big as Jackie Wilson might wind up with very little to show for it. There were lots of double dealing, double contracting, and uh, just sheer ripping off of, of the act. You, you must understand, the acts in those days uh, were teenagers going against corporate people. And as kids, you don't, you don't think that it's a cold business. I think you grow up and you find that out. <laughs> you look out! Rub my back while I'm in pain! And when you grow up, it's often too late. Kiss me with your ruby red lip! Feel me so I turn a back on the flip, that is why! Jackie Wilson's final years were spent on the rock and roll revival circuit. This 1975 performance was filmed by a Boston disc jockey who followed his career. It was Wilson's last complete performance. On September 29, 1975, Jackie Wilson had an apparent heart attack and collapsed on stage at the Latin Casino in Cherry Hill. He was 41 years old, and for the next eight years until his death, he remained incapacitated, brain damaged, in a New Jersey nursing home. That was when some of the financial realities caught up. Even though he'd been a star for more than 20 years, Jackie Wilson was in debt. He owed an estimated $300,000 in back taxes and well over 100000 to a company owned by the man he had trusted to keep his financial affairs straight. It was a classic story of how money had melted away from a young performing artist and materialized in other people's hands. And it began back in the 50s. Wilson's manager was a man named Nat Tarnapal, who was also president of Brunswick, the recording company for which Wilson made all of his hits. The debts that Wilson owed to Brunswick were, in fact, 
among the most common means of exploiting an artist's journey, advancing him money to live well for the present, and setting up a future in which Jackie Wilson would be constantly on the hook to Brunswick Records and Nat Tarnapal, who exercised control over his income. Did he know as a performer that he wasn't getting all that he deserved in terms of the monies that were coming back to him? I don't think he really knew uh, because he was always going to his managers and publishers for, in, in quotes, advances or something that he would want to buy. And But the game that was being played is, okay, Jackie, buy it. And there was no protection of his money. In fact, it was actually stealing of his money and, and, and saying, you now look, look, look at the books, you took this amount. Jackie was never aware you know, of how much he took or how much he was spending. You have to ask those questions because more than likely people won't ask them for you. And in, in those days, you know, um, I'm sure Jackie just assumed it was all being taken care of. Not only was there no investment on behalf of Jackie Wilson's future, and not only was a mountain of debt being run up against his name, shortly before Wilson's collapse in 1975, Nat Tarnapal and other Brunswick record executives were indicted for tax evasion and mail fraud in a bribery and payola scandal. Among other things, it was charged that Brunswick record artists and Jackie Wilson was far and away the most popular, were defrauded of royalties, the money they were supposed to earn from sales of their records. According to the indictment, Brunswick made hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of record shipments that were never put on the books. So the artists were never paid royalties on them. In essence, it was alleged that the same company that had run up debts in Wilson's name was also cheating him out of the money he could have used to help pay them back. Nat Tarnapal was convicted in 1976. A federal appeals court overturned the conviction 18 months later, but the judges took pains to add in their opinion that they were satisfied there was evidence from which a jury could find that Brunswick artists had been defrauded. A jury never had a chance to evaluate that evidence because a second trial never took place. And even if one had, Jackie Wilson would have been incapable of taking action or testifying because he lay in a nursing home, brain damaged from his collapse. In 1987, Nat Tarnapal died of heart failure. And we were led to one last small but telling footnote on his career by Jackie Wilson's friend, Al Kasha, who told us why some songwriters may never get credit on their work. If you look at the back of the record, you start seeing other names. You know, the names of some of the publishers' names, the, some of the record producers' names who didn't write those songs. We did look. And one of the things we found was that on Jackie Wilson's record of Dog and Around, the writing credit is listed to a Paul Tarnapal. Paul Tarnapal is Nat Tarnapal's son. He wasn't even born when Dog and Around was recorded. It was sad, but not all that unusual, that a performer whose music had generated millions of dollars in wealth had never really gotten his due. But that's just the first part of this story. Now, five years after Jackie Wilson's death, the bizarre twists and turns involved in setting the record straight are continuing, and in a way, Jackie Wilson is still being exploited. Remember, music and recordings can continue to earn royalties long after an artist is gone. And there's no question that Jackie Wilson's music is still making money for someone. Look about, look about, look about, look about, oh. Just last year, a reissue of one of his late 50s hits, Reet Petit, went to number one on the record charts in England. His greatest hits, albums and tapes, are still on the market, released by CBS Records. A script treatment has been written for a planned movie about his life. A recent film, The Good Mother, featured one of his songs, and one of the top-grossing films of 1988, Coming to America, featured his ballad, To Be Loved. But all of this potential income, which sources told us could add up to hundreds of thousands of dollars, instead of going to Wilson's children and grandchildren, is in a kind of limbo. Here's why. Even as he lay incapacitated, there was a battle over the guardianship of Jackie Wilson's estate. Among those involved in the several rounds that took place, Lynn Guidry, the woman he was living with at the time of his collapse and who says she thought she was his legal wife. She had two of his children. Also competing for the guardianship was Harlene Wilson, 
who had been separated from Wilson five years before his collapse, but never divorced from him. She is the mother of his son, John. And at one point, guardianship of Jackie Wilson's care was also sought by Joyce McRae, a fan who wound up moving to New Jersey after claiming that Wilson was being exploited even in the nursing home because his interests and treatment were being neglected by those who should have been closest to him. Where were they, this loving family? They've been like vultures over a carcass. You're convinced Jackie Wilson was neglected in the time he spent in the hospital? Absolutely. Deliberately neglected? Yes. Yes. Joyce McRae claimed that when she visited Wilson, she found him with signs of physical abuse and sloppy care. She took these photographs and films to demonstrate it, claiming there was a conspiracy to deny him proper treatment. Some members of Wilson's family, in turn, said it was Joyce McRae who was exploiting him because she was selling the photos she took to a national magazine. Wilson's son, John. She is just like an itch. You know what I mean? She has caused a lot of problems in our family. I don't even know where she came from. In 1978, the guardianship was awarded to John Wilson's mother, Harleen. She had known Jackie Wilson since he first sang in Harlem's Apollo Theater. And despite her separation from him, she was still in the eyes of the court his legal wife. And she defended herself against accusations that she was in it for what the estate might eventually bring to her. My position at the time was I wanted to just take our son to visit with his father but many people started vicious rumors and released many vicious stories to the media many which involved me on Jackie Wilson's death Harleen was named administrator of the estate in New Jersey did that mean there was finally a structure for setting things in order for his heirs for hiring attorneys to track down the money not yet because things changed again dramatically when Lynn Guidry, the mother of Wilson's last two children, challenged the New Jersey estate under Harleen and filed to set up an estate in Georgia, where she had lived with Wilson. Lynn Guidry claimed the separation agreement that Harleen and Jackie Wilson had signed meant that Harleen had no rights to the estate. I don't particularly care about the money, other than I want it for the children and the grandchildren. I think Harleen has no right to inherit. She signed away her rights when she signed her agreement. Until that dispute is settled and one of the two competing estates under Lynn Guidry and Harleen Wilson is declared the estate, Jackie Wilson's heirs will continue to be denied the payments that are due them. And the companies that should be making those payments can excuse themselves by saying they don't know who to send the money to. So who's making the money? Well, certainly CBS Records, although it won't say how much. And certainly license fees are being paid to what remains of Jackie Wilson's old record label, Brunswick which says it's hard to set those old accounts straight because its books were lost during the fraud trial. In a way, it brings us back around to one of the people we met at the very beginning of this story. To one of those early rock and roll artists who's no longer a superstar, but is still a survivor, Joey D. What I'm attempting to do with the help of lots of my friends from the 50s and 60s, is to build a living facility in Clearwater, Florida for some of the pioneers of rock and roll that are not doing very well financially today. We're going to build a performing arts center, which I'm proud to say is going to be named after Jackie Wilson. It's a dream that doesn't sound so odd anymore, and it may mean there is at least some material legacy to Jackie Wilson's career. Bob, are artists today more aware of these pitfalls? Oh, there's no question that they are. And one reason is that those kinds of problems were so widespread in the early days of rock and roll. They affected artist after artist. And now there are all these horror stories coming up about uh, people who have had no health insurance and who've had no means to support themselves at the ends of their uh, careers. What about Brunswick? Will they wind up paying something? They say that they are now going to set up an escrow account to hold some of the royalties that may be due Jackie Wilson's estate until one of the other estates is declared. Yeah. Thank you, Bob.